Let's say you've got some snakes in a rack system. Even if you don't, just pretend. Look across the room and pretend there's a snake rack. I know you're probably looking at a shower curtain, but visualize that silent rack, no movement inside. All the tubs are neatly tucked into their compartments. Are your snakes, are, are they bored in there? And are you a good keeper? I mean, maybe, let's talk about it. This video applies to any type of enclosure that you keep snakes in, but we're gonna use tubs as the example. So can a snake who lives in a rack or a single tub have an enriching, stimulating life? By the way, that's what I mean by happy snake. I'm talking about physical, mental stimulus in the form of enrichment. There are recent scientific studies out suggesting that some enrichment and some opportunities to explore and exercise are really beneficial for a snake's brain and to their general well-being. Some enrichment being the key word here. I think many people see somebody else's crazy elaborate enclosure set up or they see someone who has revamped their entire house into a snake wonderland and they think, well, I don't have time to do that. I have an important job. I work at a bank, so forget it. But here's the good news. You don't have to totally revamp your whole situation. I'm gonna show you a few different levels of what we mean by some enrichment. And if you go to Lori Torini's video, which is probably coming out today if we planned this correctly, you can learn about the science behind all this. I'll link her video at the end of mine. We decided to collaborate a bit on this subject and she's gonna handle the sciencey end of things so that I don't have to remember big words. Let me drop some science on you. My brother Kent, everyone. Hi. What science do you have for us, Kent? There was once this guy who lived on a farm and his cows kept going missing. Every day there'd be a cow missing and he'd be like, dang it, it's probably a chupacabra, you know? And after his whole herd was gone, he found out that the kid next door had a snake and that snake got too big and expensive to buy food for, so he just let it go over to the farm every night. Every night? Yeah. Kent, that's a made up story, it's not science. Go ask the farmer if it's made up. He'll be like, science happened here. Sorry, you guys, we'll make that waste of time Kent's Corner for this episode. Well, if this is Kent's Corner, let me put up the sign that Keith and Mary Harper gave me. It's a good safety sign. Thanks, Harpers, for the sign. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, the only show that sometimes doesn't happen in a corner. Are we done? Yep. Great. The Cliff Notes version of the science that we're talking about in this video is that a snake with some access to enrichment uses their brain a lot more. They're in thinking mode rather than just reacting based on instinct, and they're much less fearful than a snake that has no forms of enrichment. Apparently, use it or lose it works with human brains and snake brains. Hey, we have something in common. I wanna make this clear, I'm not judging big breeders that use paper in a water dish, because some things work logistically and some things don't, depending on what type of situation you have. Do you have 20 snakes or do you have 800? The fact is that most of us got our amazing healthy snakes with all these cool genetics that we love, from a big breeder. I'm just giving you some ideas that you can take if you want and just use whichever ones work for you logistically. I think you're gonna find that you can be a great snake keeper with a number of different types of setups. And I'll let you in on a little behind the scenes secret. This video isn't made for a breeder with 800 snakes. It's made for you. Wink. So stupid, the wink is terrible. Delilah, why do I have to say wink? You don't have to say it, you know that. You don't have to say words when you do things, right? So providing your snake with enrichment in a glass or PVC enclosure is considered at least common courtesy, right? Providing enrichment in a tub seems to be thought of as optional, but let's start out with that bare bones environment and we'll build up from there. So let's say you've watched a bunch of videos from really big breeders who keep their snakes this way. So this is just the way you started to do it. Your snakes have access to fresh water. They don't even have to leave their den and risk predators to go and find water. And a butler brings them their meals every so often. What's not to like? Thousands of snakes are kept this way and live very long snake lives in a serial environment like this. But maybe you're starting to realize that this situation might not provide the best enrichment and stimulation opportunities for your snakes. But you can't change everything and fill your home with massive enclosures. But also, you want your snakes to have stimulation so their little brains don't atrophy. So what can you do? Let's make this tub cool for a snake. I think I told you, I work at a bank. I'm an assistant manager, not a zoological enclosure specialist. Now give me a shift or two to schedule and I'm all about it, but... How about that, Chief? I know it's just a toilet paper roll, but this is a snake, not your 15-year-old kid. A snake is gonna look at this and go, What is this new thing that just appeared in my home? It smells of cardboard and that's a new smell for me. Can I crawl on it? Oh, it moved a little bit. Is it safe? Wait a second, I can crawl through it? It's my own train tunnel? I'm Thomas the Tank Engine over here. A 
A new thing to a snake is a big deal. To you, this is a toilet paper roll. To a snake, it's a new thing worth inspecting for a really long time. Pretty easy to do this. Take something that is trash and make it not trash. Figure it'll be trash in a few days, you throw it out and then replace it with something else that would have been trash. This gives your snakes some constantly rotating novel items to explore. And that seems like a bare bones plan for a snake because it's so easy, but it's actually fantastic. I think dropping in a new piece of cardboard or plastic or whiskey sleeve if you have them every so often is great enrichment for any type of enclosure whether you have a tub or a tank or whatever just do it once or twice a week every time you spot clean pull out a year eight swap their piece of cardboard out yeah but bob i like things to be aesthetically pleasing i'm an assistant bank manager so i like things to be nice can we just be done with the assistant bank manager i think that's a bit we can probably retire Okay, upgrade. Now, let me say that I think paper is fine for a substrate if you need it. I actually use paper sometimes. Different types of substrates can be enrichment for a snake, but I find that people choose their substrate for the health of the animal. So you're gonna choose what works best for your cleanliness and your humidity situation. I'm gonna change to cocoa husk chip for this tub though, because that's what I use most of the time. Go to the dollar store or the craft store and get a bunch of fake plants. Just make sure they don't have any sharp metal bits and they'll be just fine. They are way cheaper than the reptile specific fake plants. So get more than you need because you can change these out too. The difference here is that this looks a lot nicer than cardboard, but instead of throwing it out, you're gonna have to clean it. I use fake plants. So what this means for my snakes is that they get a change out. Usually when I spot clean, and then everybody gets a full change out every time I do a complete clean of their tub every four weeks. Would it be better to throw a new piece of cardboard in there two or three times a week? Probably. But we do what we can, and sometimes we don't think of things until we're shooting a video about it. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. They are helping out this channel, and in turn, Kent and I are giving them stuff and extra content. I don't try to do everything. I just try to do some. And snakes do really well with some enrichment opportunities. So if you're giving them some, you're doing really well as a keeper. Don't feel like you have to do huge major things. Do something that enriches your snake and makes you feel good as a keeper. Small, simple improvements are doable and so much less stressful than a complete overhaul of how you do things. And remember, this video is for all setups, not just tubs. So if you have a beautiful tank setup and it's been exactly the same for months, get some new stuff and switch it up. Your enrichment item is no longer enrichment when it's no longer new or different for the snake. It's got to be a novel item. I change the plants in the inspector's bioactive enclosure. I move them around. I move seed pods around. I'm always like pulling something. If something's dying, I'm pulling it out, whatever. He notices everything. I named him the inspector because he spends so much time inspecting every new thing that's in there. I actually might toss in something ridiculous tonight and use it as B-roll just to watch him inspect it. Let's talk about, let's talk about hides real quick. In a minimalistic rack, snake hides aren't usually used. Most snakes do just fine with no hides in a rack because the entire rack acts as a hide. But I find that many snakes still like something with walls to hug their body. Also, hides provide another level for your snakes to climb up on top of, and that counts as some enrichment. It seems small, but a tub with one flat level gets a big upgrade when all of a sudden you've added another level for your snakes to, to get up to. Your snake can either go inside the hide or they can go up on top and sort of squish themselves in between the top of the hide and the ceiling of the rack which snakes really like to squish themselves into places. So it's a big deal compared to no levels. Damara, for example, I talked about her in my last video with hides. Her previous keeper didn't offer her hides, but I did and she uses them. And when I take one hide out, she'll use the other hide and not worry about thermal regulation. So I've got two big hides in her tub. Because of that, it's really important to me that Damara gets plenty of explore time outside her enclosure. In last week's video, I wasn't holding a snake and you guys noticed. I'm making up for it in this video. Now that you've added some enrichment to their enclosure, here's a great way to up your game as a keeper. Explore time, some explore time. It doesn't have to be every day, doesn't have to be all day, just some time out. Handling sessions like this are good, but letting them get a chance to wander around and explore on their own is better for their mental stimulations. They're going where they want, supervised, and exploring and figuring out new things. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm all about letting my smaller snakes roam in a playpen. My arboreal snakes or snake has a ladder that she can roam around on, and my big girls can crawl all over the entire room if they want to. As mentioned in a recent video, I don't do this 
every day for every snake, and that's okay. Each snake gets some out of the enclosure time, and I do what I can. So no pressure with this. Do what you can based on your time set up in your household situations. Sometimes I'm too lazy to set up the playpen, but I have a couple of snakes that look like they could use some exercise. A cluttered countertop is a theme park for these little ones. So I stand there and watch them and marvel at their behavior, and they get some supervised free roaming time. Three full hours of it. I'm, I'm kidding you guys, like 10 or 15 minutes is great. Have a coffee and watch your snakes roam. I make coffee with a snake every morning. I have a snake either around my neck or I'm holding them in with one hand and then the other hand, one-handed, I'm making my coffee. While I have coffee each morning, I'm watching a snake or multiple snakes roam around the house. And that's time that otherwise I'd be looking at my phone anyway, right? So I might as well look at my snakes instead of a phone. You know, you can knock out some good enrichment time early in the morning. Yesterday I had number three out, numero trace, I call him Tracy, and I let him check out Echo's ladder a little bit, but you don't have to have a fancy ladder. I mean, those all this stuff back here, that's plastic plants and plastic ledges and things like that. So it doesn't matter what you use. Let him climb on a pile of boxes. I do that sometimes too. By the way, I've been asked if I'm keeping number three since I've now given him a name, which would mean that I'd be greedily keeping three out of six in the clutch. No, maybe. Wherever you're at in your life with work, family, other animals, other hobbies, if you can give your snake some enrichment, you're doing fantastic as a snake keeper. Want to hear about the science behind all this? Here's Lori's video. <laughs> And the veterinarian told her the only reason the snake was laying there next to her was to size her up to be its next meal. And that, my friends, is science. Kent, put my glasses down. Sorry. <laughs>